like we're good to go. We're about a hundred right now. Well, we can see it, but uh, pardon the shape of my shop. We're fixing that. Over there is a uh, Quincy compressor, and it's got a uh, refrigerated air dryer that I run all my air through. In fact, that's probably what you hear. I hope it's not too annoying. All right. a little air that may be why that is changed out but set on 60 right now See if I can find a piece of scrap and see if it'll start up. your right hand gloves and no left hand gloves. There's nothing coming on. Take that back. The, the, the green power light comes on. No overload or fault light on. And I have no power there. Nothing's cutting. First thing we could do is unplug it. Check these switches. Or these poor fuses. So 30 amp, and I can't tell if it's any good or not. We'll have to get the meter out. We'll be right back. All right, back with the meter.
ever happened to you? They were, they were on there so nicely. All right. That one's good. That one is good. Looking around for any hidden ones. Well, those are the only fuses I see. Both of them are 30 amp. I'm seeing on this side. Kind of dark in there. Let me get a flashlight. Well, Let's make sure that the power cord feeding this is doing okay. We've got a box. Oh, you can't see that. There you go. Two hundred forty-one. That legs one twenty. The ground is 21. All right. So it's not the cord. Let's look on the board and see if I can see any more uh, fuses. Sometimes TVs and uh, amplifiers and things like that will have fuses mounted to the board. I hope that's not the case because this would be very difficult to get in there. I don't see any obvious reset buttons, fuses, burn marks, anything that indicates it's not working here. So let's turn it on and see if the power is coming through to the, the connections back there. Rule out the cord. When you plug it in, the fan comes on and the power light comes on. Well, that would mean that power should be getting through the cord. Let's just make sure. Black goes over there and white goes over there. Two hundred forty volts. Up. Well, got a red fault.
I wonder that fault is because I don't have the air hooked up. Let's try that. Don't have the air hooked up. Fault light comes on. Okay. So the machine knows it's getting air. One of these two lines here tells it that there's pressure. It actually has let's see, turn around. It actually has two lines at a Y right here. One comes over here and then goes down to a T. The other comes around and then comes in to this solenoid and I guess a pressure sensor. wondering why they have to have two of those. This one doesn't have a way to con control the air, so it should be going all the time. There should be maybe some air coming through. You know, I'm wondering if something's wrong with these consumables. Well, you can't see me over there. I think I'm going to change that out real quick before we go in much farther. It's a little stamped wrench that came with it. screws also and there's a flat on it. Let me see what I can doesn't look like anything was messing with it. find as I get older I drop more things. Hands don't work as well as they used to. Okay. No, what the heck. We'll put a new cup on it. So everything from this point forward is new. The little cup feels a little loose in there. Give it a shot. There's another switch down here. That may be a safety. I didn't even notice it. It sticks. That might be the problem. I'll bet you some money it is. Turn this back on, and hopefully that was the whole problem. Over 
here to the you see that little switch it's moving and it's sticking it was stuck in that position and I didn't even think it was a switch so but I think it does Let's go in there all right turn it on we're gonna start at 30 amps This time, when I pushed that down, air came out. And when I pushed the switch up here, I could hear a, a relay switching inside. But it's not getting any conductivity. The switch is just making me wonder if there's something wrong with it. One screw is out of the handle. So I guess we might as well continue on. switch out and see what's going on. like a small straight screwdriver. Get you guys where you could see too. I've unplugged the unit. One screw gone, it makes me suspect somebody's been in here before us. You see, okay. Hate taking things apart like this, you never know what's going to jump out at you. They've got a lot of stuff crammed in this side. Wires. 
see if we can pry that open. Got two wires coming here to that switch. When I push this switch, it bounces back very nicely, rebounds, and I could hear a relay. I don't know if it was the uh, air relay or what. The rest of the torch, let me just take it out here. Goes down to another switch. So you can see this. Looks like this switch is in series with the switch up here. Looks like you must have that one down to provide power from here. So if it wasn't working, it wouldn't be connecting both of those. Switch is kind of hot glued in place. switch out. I don't know if it's got a cover on it or if it snaps in place or what. Aha. That is rebounding nicely. So I suspect it's binding here on the side somewhere. Yep. troubleshooting purposes we're going to leave this off we may end up having to sand a little bit around here and find the spot that it's touching all the time but I can make it work just like that now we have a red wire that looks like it goes up through the torch And I have a red wire. have a red wire right here that goes up the handle. I'm willing to bet that it just goes straight up there. And if I were to unplug it here, Test up here. Yep, go straight through. Now this is plugged into a plug underneath. I'm wondering if this is making good connections. Looks clear, clean. Wouldn't be hard to put a new torch on this. There's just these two connections and then the main power line. Looks like these two are switches, switch legs. And this is the main power that goes to the tip. It's in there 
good. You're in there good. All right. I'm going to turn it on, so hold your ears. I'm going to plug it in first. Now hold your ears. Push this button. Nothing happens. It's good. So you got to hold this button down. something see it from there and what I noticed was as I was looking at this angle that I'll wait till the pressure is off. Alright I'm gonna show you look in here I push the trigger now the fault light's coming off. Let off the trigger must have a timer that their fault light went off. Now, and then it has enough air pressure. Increased it to 100 psi. fault light went off. So that may be a problem that it's not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and put the gun back together. It was sticking and that's an issue I can work on later. I think that the gun Circuitry is fine. It may have not have been giving me power because it didn't sense enough air pressure. I think I had it set at 60 pounds. And just now when I turned it on.
forgot the name of these types of heads. But I bet a socket head cap screw will go right in there just nicely. Okay. Let's test this theory. Plugged in 100 PSI. Put on my Michael Jackson glove and see if it lights up. Hold your ears. when I push that tip in. So I'm wondering if this is, you gotta push the tip in and then pull it back or what? Just sitting here touching it, nothing's happening. Pushing the button down. Shaking a lot. A nice clean cut. All right. Looks like we solved a few things. It brings more questions to my mind, though. I guess the number one question is, is this gun worth saving? When you have to push that down to initiate the arc, I mean, that's, that's just piercing basically, which is hard on nozzles. Okay. Well, that shows that the machine does work. That's the cut. I hope you can see maybe. Did very clean cut. That's where I pierced it basically to start it. Maybe I can pull that. Uh, I'm conflicted here on what to do. From everything that I've read, piercing is the hardest thing on the nozzles. 
Well, it looks like this machine may have to be started that way by piercing or touching somehow to uh, start the arc. But if I do that in conjunction with the guide that goes on the tip of the uh, torch here, it clips onto that ring and extends down here past this area. And when it does so, it's going to make it awful hard to compress that to get it to start. So we'll maybe continue this once I get that guard and see how to do it. If anyone knows of a way to convert this to where just pushing the buttons does something, so I can keep that cup off of the metal, I'd be grateful to hear it. All right, let me wind this up and uh, we'll talk to you later.